Ah, hi all. Welcome back to the John Deere B tractor restoration. And in that picture, you can see the cylinder head. And I'm busy reinstalling the uh, the valves because when I had the head um, pressure tested to check that I got these two push rod tubes incorrectly, um, the seats had just tarnished slightly. Uh, the seats being on this side here had just tarnished slightly. So all I'm doing is just lapping the V valves back in slightly just to get a nice polished finish back on them. So I'm just putting a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, grinding grinding paste on um, grinding compound sorry and uh, I'm sure a lot of you have done this before I'm sure you have it's, uh, it's not rocket science a bit of oil on the um, on the old uh, valve stem put it in from behind put it in from behind well, stem comes through. You could just hear that slight grindy noise. So that's the um, the, the valve grinding compound working. I have a slightly different take on grind on uh, doing this. Um, uh, I use <laughs> I use my uh, my drill just to go gently. <laughs> One way and the other. And then you just want to push it out a bit. Just to lap them in again. There we go. I'm not after heavy grinding them in. I'm just after lapping the back in and putting a bit of a of a finish back on the actual seat and the um, the valve. So just get a rag, clean that off, and um, it will have hopefully hopefully just put a nice uh, polish the uh, seat and the valve face up again. Well, not polished it up, but uh, if you get that nice grey dull finish, it's not a million miles away. So we'll just put that back up on there. We'll tip the head over, hopefully without knocking the camera off. Bit of shake there, sorry. <laughs> and then we'll just clean the, um, the valve lapping compound off the seat. Yeah, it's polished that up nicely. This one was probably the worst one actually. Don't know why, just got a little bit of rust on it. Hoping you can see this. Yeah. So that's got that done. We'll just sit the head back up again, gently. And then I generally just give the valve another coating of oil. It might be a while before it's started again. Well, it won't be too long, but just give the whole thing a bit of oil, it won't hurt it. Just stops anything else rusting, really. I did those two last night, and then I called off to do something in the house. <laughs> so I never got finished. Also, the other reason was that my camera, my phone's playing up. I do all these videos on the um, on my iPhone, and it was playing up last night for some reason or other. And uh, so I've let the thing run out of charge all day today. And uh, needless to say, I had people ringing me saying, "Can't get hold of him," <laughs> but it's because my phone. I just wanted my phone to sort of settle down again. Now with these, they um, are quite a soft 
um, valve spring so you can actually put the put them together by hand which I'm going to show you now so what I do is I find a nut and I'll stick the nut on top of the valve underneath so it can't disappear so that's now rigid it can't disappear down over um, now for some reason or other I don't know why but um, on these engines the inlets have a bit of a valve seat it's a tin press tin feel these are two inlet valves uh, now the exhausts don't have them for some reason I don't know why it's probably something to do with all the uh, all the um, the measurements probably and tolerances but that goes on like so you've got your valve spring there Nice big old soft valve spring. Put that on, sir. And then you're, um, I don't know what the proper name is for this, I should know. <laughs> so that goes on top of your valve spring anyway, and all the rest of it. Yeah. Like that. And then, uh, you put your little um, collet in. I always put a little bit of oil on them. Like so, and basically, <laughs> we can do this without everything going wrong. Just push it down. There we go. That's one in. Get the other one. Hope this is coming out. Oh, you're just in the corner, aren't we? I'll just move it across a little bit. There we go. Uh, I'm using a stand. Uh, my son got me a stand for Christmas, so I thought I'd give it a go. Um, just push it in again. There we are. There we are. See how it's seated in. See? All hunky dory. And a bit of oil on, as I say, just to stop it getting rusty again. So, so we'll lift it back over. Oh, did you see that? There it is. Nicely in there. Um, all sorted. So, yeah, so we'll do the exhaust valve now. As you can see, the head. I put a top coat of paint on the head. Um, I'll just push that over a bit more, maybe. Put top coat of paint on the head because this area here is hidden in amongst the chassis, and so you can't uh, can't get to it. So again, a little bit of grinding compound. It's the finest one I have, so it's just, it's just a matter of polishing the. Uh, Putting a bit of a, just taking the rust, rust off. As I say, it just got a bit rusty. Had the uh, seats and the and the valve, actual valve face. So just again, I just need to drill. bit of pressure on from behind just to hold the valve in against the seat. I used to have one of those um, bits of stick with a rubber plunger on and used to do do that with through your hands and oh, bloody awful things they were. I could never get them. I could never ever get poor hand coordination I think. <laughs> but uh, anyway that's how I do them now. I'm sure there'll be people out there saying oh don't do it like that. That's what I do. So, it's, so it's quite important that you get that compound cleaned off once you uh, once you've done that. You don't want that left on the valve valve seat or the um, or the seat in the head. 
Um, put that back on there. Check you can still see what I'm doing. Yeah, that's good. Put a bit of oil on here. How long is this video getting to? 10, ten minutes. So put a bit of oil on, as I say. Can't beat a bit of oil, keeps things from rusting and that. As you'll notice, there's actually no valve seal on these. And a lot of high speed engines, there's a little rubber seal goes on here to stop the oil going down the valve um, stem and ending up in the engine. So again, just a what an old nut or something. Put it on the uh, on the valve like that, and then just quietly tip the head over. Hopefully, that's it. <laughs> we can find the blooming thing. Where's it gone? There we are. It stops the uh, stops the um, valve pushing through. Yeah, so as I say, there's no little washer on there, there's no like um, valve seaty washer. Um, it might be just to stop hold, give the the valve spring somewhere to stop it moving around. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, might be, there should, maybe should be ones on the exhaust and they've got lost over the years. Again, who knows. Um, Same trick again, just a bit of oil, push them down by hand. I do have a proper valve spring compressor, but <laughs> it's not big enough for these valves. So, so I'll just push that in like that. You've just got to be a little bit careful. If you let go of the spring, it doesn't come back and <laughs> poke you in the eye. Or worst case scenario. Or um, or fling these little collets and bits all across your workshop floor. Um, I'll speak with experience on both occasions. Uh, I'll just push it around a little bit. There we go. Uh, push that one in. There we are. All in. So yeah, so yeah, that little washer could be a sort of locating thing for the bottoms of these springs. So yeah, yeah. But hopefully, you can see that. So there, nicely put in. So yeah. So I'll just lay that down on there. So there we go. So that's all the valves back in. So your two in the middle are your inlets. Two out of one to the exhausts. So yeah. So I'll get that now. Well, the head's about ready to go back on. Um, so it, it's good to go really. As I say, those two um, push rod tubes I made, they worked out fine. So that's good. So that's good. Excuse me. So I'll just pan you around to the tractor. Now on the tractor, you can see we've got the, uh, the flywheel installed. Um, so it's on. Now I talked about end, sh end float and, end, and end shaft movement on the crankshaft and basically if we put this, uh, you're not really going to see that gauge there. So I mean basically your end float is this way so you don't want the um, crankshaft moving too much sideways. And so what you do is you tighten it up onto the end of the crankshaft. There's the crankshaft there. You tighten it up with those um, those bolts there, one there, and one on the other side. So so effectively you're nipping you're nipping the um, the uh, flywheel onto the crank. And that's and that's where it holds. Now I have a spanner here somewhere which I made, 
which has a, uh, well, it was a conventional spanner, but I, I cut that end off that you can see and welded it. And you can um, put the thing in behind onto the nut and twist it this way with a bar through the top, um, through the top ring. I believe there is a proper John Deere tool for doing it. Um, but obviously I don't have it, so improvise that for me. And so, as you can see, I've got the dial gauge set up. And um, at the moment, it's reading zero. And um, if I push it in, and that's coming out, it's reading just over five foul. Um, now, in the manual, it suggests that it needs to be between five and ten foul of an inch movement this way. So I've got around about, as I say, just over five and six there. Now I know this is a freshly rebuilt engine, things are going to bed in. And so um, I've kept it on the lower tolerance. I've also, I'm thinking that this needs to be fairly tight, correct, uh, because of with it being an electric start in relation to the, um, the starter motor. Um, probably doesn't make a lot of difference, but anyway, that's what I've kept it there for. So yes, yeah, so that's what I've done. That's how you measure your um, crankshaft end float. So there it's six foul, back to zero. You can hear it clunk in there. In the manual, um, in the workshop manual, it does suggest that you um, use the clutch lever and work the clutch lever backwards or forwards a little time or two, and that sort of beds things in. But to be fair, I think if you um, if you just gently move it with your body backwards and forwards and uh, measure it, I mean, they, they come on the hand start ones. They notoriously come slack. Um, and the, the way the clutch works by snapping the two um, the two discs, friction discs between the driver, that doesn't help because um, obviously it's the action actually pushes on the crankshaft, and so you lose some of that. Uh, you know, it, it it works on that gap on the end float gap, and uh, I mean I have a B that BW. It's pretty good. That BN, I have to check that. Probably every 30 or 40 hours running. Um, but it's because the, the flywheel is marginally slack on the crankshaft. Well, it's not slack, it's worn. I think that's a better word. It's worn. And that little Model H we have is a terror. You can set that up and within 10 minutes it's gone slack. So it's a desperate thing to try and keep right that one. So, so yeah. Anyway, I'm looking at this video, it's rambled on long enough, we're up to 18 minutes. <laughs> so, so that's what we're on with at the moment. We've got that flywheel done, cylinder head sorted out with these valves, so yeah, that's good. Um, so. Okay then, hope that's been of interest. Thank you.